worth the 1.3 million um, babies every year um, that are killed. If you, per se, outlaw abortion, what what do you now do with those um, 1.3 million babies? Because I would I would assume that it's not two loving heterosexual parents that um, are you know financially stable and ready to have a child that are the ones that are having these abortions. It's usually um, I think single moms and stuff like that. And as you talked about, when you talked about marriage, that's not a good way to have a child and that's not a good way to uh, have children in this society. Yeah, so you're talking about the socioeconomic uh, concerns yes. with abortion. Yes. Um, I, you know, my first answer to that is, is um, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> well, be, I mean, seriously, because that could never justify killing people. So even if you could show me in a crystal ball some vision of the future where abortion is illegal and we are all living in destitute poverty, then I would say, yes, let's do it. Let's do it now. Because I would rather live in a poor country that doesn't kill babies. I'm here studying biology, and so we've learned a lot about genetic um, mutations and disorders and such. And there actually are hermaphrodite human beings where they have both ovaries and um, testicles. And that, I have it right here. It's actually a medical condition called ovotesticular disorder. And there are also other genetic disorders where people are born with XXY, XY, or just X or just Y and such. Um, and while it may seem rare, there are hundreds of thousands of people born with this each year. And so going off of your fairy tale hybrid people, they do exist. And so I'm just wondering how that would play into your view of there being a spectrum of gender because- These are people who can get pregnant and also impregnate someone else? Um, yes. It, hermaphrodites, they have both no. ovaries no. and tests. No. no. Uh, they, 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 if, that, if such a person existed, that would certainly, um, I would not include that part of my next speech. But uh, <laughs> such a person does not exist. Now, intersex and now, the genetic deformities you're talking about obviously do exist. And I expected someone to bring that up in the, in the q and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a fine point to bring up. Um, two things I would say to that. Number one, that actually has nothing to do with transgenderism because when, we're if, if when we talk about transgender, we're talking specifically about intersex people, then we would just say intersex. But with transgender, most of the time, we're talking about men who, they don't have any deformity. They, they are just straight up men, clearly, um, and they are identifying as, woman, as a woman. So even if I agreed that what you're talking about is some sort of exception, that actually would have nothing to do with the transgender topic. But I don't think it is an exception because, as I said, I think a true uh, middle, you know, a true resident of the middle circle of the, of the Venn diagram would be someone who has the reproductive capabilities of both genders. And no one like that exists. I mean, to be, not to be crude, but there isn't anyone who can get themselves pregnant, right? And uh, that doesn't exist in the human kingdom anyway. So I don't think, I, I think what you're talking about there are people who have deformities, and so in their case, it would be more difficult than usual to determine what their actual biological sex is because the usual indicators aren't there or aren't as obvious, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a biological sex. It's just... What is a woman? Well, Can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't because but, it's not for me to say. I, womanhood looks different for everybody. What do, you, what do you define a woman as? An adult human female. And what does a female mean? Uh, well, well, that's how do you, how do you define a someone with, with female reproductive organs. Okay. Someone who's, you know, here's the thing. When you're, when you're female, it goes right down to your bones, your DNA. So that's why if someone dies, okay. we could dig up their bones 100 years from now. We have no idea what they believed in their head, but we can tell what sex they were okay. because it's, in, it's, down in, it's, it's in, ingrained in every fiber of their being. Interesting. So I'm trying to understand. Your definition is that a woman is someone who is female, you said, right? Correct, gotcha. as okay. a biological female. So what happens if we have maybe someone who is female, identifies as a woman, right? You know, cisgender woman, right? As you explained, as you just explained, it maybe doesn't have the ability to reproduce. Well, maybe it doesn't well, have those organs that you're talking about well, that are well, reproductive organs. I, mean, I have answered the question. You stood up here and said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. What is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not but myself. But you used well, the well, word. So what did you mean when you said trans women are women, if you don't know what it means? Right. So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who- That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? 
as a woman. What is that? So I'd like to say that I'm actually a part of that organization that was going to come and try and derail you tonight. I didn't hear a single thing though that constituted an attack on queer or trans lives or an attack on me personally. So I don't know what they were on about there. Moreover, everything that you have said on gender identity, gender expression, John money, um, pronoun usage, uh, what else, the sex gender distinction, you are 100% correct. Wow. You are 100% correct. I don't know if you've ever heard that from a trans person before. I identify as a trans woman, you are 100% correct on that. And it is an absolute travesty that the trans community bases everything on such vacuous concepts. My thing is though, is I don't agree with your conclusion. I don't agree with it. And I, but more so the reason why I don't is less um, a matter of argumentation and more so a matter of method. You've stated time and time again that your approach to this is to try and keep things simple and uncomplicated. Mm -hmm. As in, you don't try and engage with the nuance of the position of trans people. But that's exactly how my org treats you. They don't think that your, your, your arguments are worth looking at because they cast you as a transphobe. I did otherwise, and I looked, I'm like, yeah, no, this guy's absolutely correct on all these things. So wh which conclusion are you? You said you disagree with my conclusions. Well, which it's the conclusion, conclusion that, uh, of the model that you're postulating of gender, of that it's just this, you know, it's, uh, it's a, you know, you have, you have man, woman, they're biologically contingent. My sort of question is, do you think that defaulting to simplicity, if this is the most dire issue of the age, which is something else that I agree with you on, do you really think that a method of simply recoursing to the most simplistic matter of approach is what we should be doing here? Yes. Really? Yeah, I do. Uh, you because, I mean, I, I appreciate, uh, I, uh, I appreciate everything that you said. And I appreciate your attitude. Uh, I very rarely encounter your attitude from um, that side of the, that side of the ideological aisle. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. But yeah, I do think that making it simple is the right approach because to my view, it is a very simple question. Now, if you want to get into the personal experiences of each individual and, you know, um, someone who is, uh, who's experiencing gender dysphoria and, you know, what do we do to, 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 to treat that problem? Uh, sure. There's all kinds of personal subjective nuances and things like that. Uh, you know, if, if someone is, if my child came to me and said that they were confused about their identity, I wouldn't just say, ah, oh, get out of my face. I would want to sit down and talk to them. And that's when you get into, that becomes a sort of an interpersonal exchange. And so you get into some of those personal nuances and everything, and that's fine. But the underlying fact, the underlying reality is simple, that there are only males and females in the human race. There are no other categories. There's never, there is no third sex. It doesn't exist. Um, even though we hear about intersex people, you know, you know, an actual intersex person would be someone who has the reproductive capacities of both men and women, males and females. Such a person has never existed, ever. Um, so what I see here is a binary system, and in that way, it's very simple, and I think that has to be our message. Yeah. With the fluidity of these things, how do I know if, if I'm a woman? You know, I... I That's a great I like, question. I like scented candles. And yeah. I've watched Sex and the City. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So how do I know? Yeah, Matt, that question right there, like that question is like when it's asked with a lot of curiosity, right? That's the beginning of a lot of people's like gender identity development journeys. If my mom who gave birth to me is a woman mm -hmm. and my wife is a woman, um, though I haven't asked her, maybe I should. Um, but if they're all women and also the boy who sits down with you and says, I, I think I'm a girl, actually is one, then, then what is a woman? Mm. Yeah. Great question. I'm not a woman, so I, <laughs> I can't really answer that. I don't care if you think you're a sheepdog and you come into my store, it don't matter to me. Just don't come in and try to shove that shit down my throat. If it makes someone feel better, what about their, their feelings? I, mean, I don't give a shit about their feelings. I'm old. What about the Star Wars universe? Jar Jar Binks, pansexual, do you think? Transgender? Um, why, would I, why would I even care? It's, if it's his truth. Well, it ain't true. You're not a scientist, you're not a gender studies major, or are you? No. no? Okay, how do you know that you're a man? How do I know that I'm a, I guess because I got a dick. So, so what, what is a woman?
Why do you ask that question? I just really like to know. What do you think the answer to that question is? Well, I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor who, who's, who this, is your, this is what you do. What other kinds of answers have you gotten? A lot of like this, where you're, where you're not answering, and I've gotten a lot of that, so. I think it's interesting that you, that you say that some of the people you've, you've um, interviewed have been um, reluctant to answer it, and I think that has a lot to do with the way, the questions that preceded it, and the, the way that you've conducted yourself in the interview. How have I conducted myself? How do you think you've conducted yourself? You, you, <laughs> you just really don't want to answer the questions, do you? I, I came today very willing and, and enthusiastic about answering questions about women's and gender sexuality studies, which is so the you work that to, I do. you wanted to answer questions about women's studies, and so shouldn't the, the first answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? Uh, as a woman. I but just but what is that? As a woman. Do you know what a circular definition is? I do. It's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a woman is, is a woman. Because mm -hmm. well, you're seeking what we would call in my field of work an essentialist definition of gender. I think it sounds like you would like me to give you a set of biological or cultural characteristics that are associated with one gender or the other. I'm not seeking any type of definition. I'm just seeking a definition. Yeah, and I gave you... Sure. Uh, at what age can a child first begin to transition into another gender or identify themselves as a gender different from how they were born. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's research and data that show that um, babies and infants um, understand differences in gender. I don't know if you've ever heard of people in the trans-abled community. These are people who are physically able-bodied but feel like they should be disabled or identify as such. Uh, for example, a man who has two arms, but feels like you should have one. If a, if a man in this kind of marginalized community was went to the doctor and said, I want to have my arm cut off, do you think that? That doesn't have anything to do with gender identity. Well, it's uh, so someone's, someone's self-identity, how someone identifies. That's, some, so that's someone who has a, um, a, and I'll accept it as a mental diagnosis, a psychiatric condition. I don't even pretend to know what aptomenophilia is all about. But somehow it's the idea that you, and you, you know, you're fascinated or charmed by having a limb or part of a limb missing. Mm. Okay, I would say that's, uh, pardon my non-medical language, kooky. You don't see any? You think this is totally irrelevant? Yep. What if a man decides that his, his gender identity is, is woman? A woman has its own duty, and a man has its own duty, and a lady cannot duty the duty of a man, and a man cannot do a duty of a woman. Can a man become a woman? No. No? No. What about a transgender? Transgender? No. No. It look like to, if you want to become a lady but you're a man, you have something wrong in something your wrong. mind. Something wrong in your family, something wrong in you. What about if someone was non-binary? Come again? Non-binary? Uh-huh. You know, like non... I believe uh -huh. that I was born gay. Are you a gay? You are gay. Since? Since as far as I can remember. Now, tell me this. Have you ever had any woman? No. How many men have you had? How many men? Mm. Oh, I couldn't count. Many? Oh, yeah. You've had many. many. More than 10? Yeah. More than 20? Yeah. 50? Yeah. So you don't love? Yeah. I haven't had as many as I told you, by the way. Yeah, go on. You, you don't love. I do love. So it's ganging. I do love. Look, don't fool the world. I'm not fooling the world. And don't fool Ugandans. 
Oh my God. My brother, my son. Oh my God. Okay? Okay? You were not born again. Okay. You were born a man yes, with I a was. penis. Yes, that's right. Okay? Uh -huh. And with ananas. Yes, the I believe anus so. was for defecation <laughs> and the penis was for urination. Okay, yeah, we've and been